Afternoon Reds and welcome to the post-match reaction on Bourne and Red where Liverpool have collected a frustrating solitary point at Craven Cottage. Do you want to go first or shall I go first? first. Alright, okay, look. look let, let's get it out there. Fulham were absolutely brilliant. The way they came out and they were at the races from the word go. And the way they, were, sort of, they got about us in midfield, they outnumbered us, they outfought us, they outthought us. And let's be honest, they outclassed us for 50 minutes. And look, let's go, let's start with the, the line of, we knew Bobby is going to start today. But, you know, we should still have enough. And I know everybody wanted sort of Nunes to start. He makes the pitch a lot bigger and he stretches play like he showed when he came on. But we just weren't passing to each other in terms of that Christmas, a Christmas of passing and speed of thought. And look, I'm going to come to the right side of me feel the role in Henderson. But I don't think this is all on Henderson. And I know Twitter is going to go into a meltdown on Henderson and we need a midfielder and this and that. And I get that. And I actually agree to an extent. But we should still have enough, you know, for Fulham away on the opening day of the season. Because for me, we look leggy -chain. Look, you know what it is? I said, you can't just blame all on him. But yeah, you know, let's you know, face the music. The first half, we were piss poor. Every single uh, player on that, on that pitch today, in that first half, honestly, we were really, really poor. You know, we couldn't even put string three pieces together. You know, and, and, and honestly, you know, when you said, you know, they are fours and, and they hustled us, they hurried us, they didn't give us any space, any time, any of any player of ours received the ball, bang, they were straight onto him. And you know, the they played without no fear. It was just no fear football. Yeah. And I got to give credit to, um, Silver for that because you know there's not many sides who play against Liverpool and you know who come out and said okay we're gonna have a go at you guys you know bring it on one on one anybody of our players receive the ball bang they was bang at him and you know yeah, they, they, just, they just didn't give us a space and you know look I get that you know this is when our midfield you know in our midfielders the Thiago's this is when you know we need them to come to the front and 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 be counted in a sense and to be fair you know in the midfield we were shocking the bunch of no, I know, but you know, it's easily said just the midfield, but it, we were really bad, and honestly, I, I was I was just shocked how bad we were. You you kind of knew what their plan was, you know, especially from the back. They launched it uh, a few times, but they played football a lot of the, at the times. But they won the first ball through Mitrovic many times, and they also frustrated. Mitrovic was bloody prime drop, but man, he was, he was, and. What, he did, what they tried to do is out crowd us, you know, on the left hand side, on our left hand side, and they did. And they won so much of the second ball. That was the problem. And they were winning at the second second ball. And Pereira actually was at times, many times, playing ahead of Mitrovic What's because he knew he's going to win the ball. Whether he'll get the flick on or he'll put it on his chest and out muscle our defender. And I'll come to Van Dijk in a bit because I thought he was, you know, kind of very, very angry. It's one of the worst performances I've seen from Van Dijk. Normally he's that Rolls Royce type of, of you know sort of defender, but he was hustled and harassed today because Mitrovic, to his credit, you know he was everywhere, and brilliant. their players around him brilliant. could actually get close to him because they knew he's going to win the ball, and it wasn't just a, a performance where you just see a guy being a focal point, very rarely involved in the play. But we made Mitrovic. Who scored a lot of goals? I know in the in the championship last year, we made him like you said a, a prime drug bag. You know the thing was, you know, even the amount of times he actually ran the channels. I said, you know, and, the, and there was so many occasions where he'd actually sit on Robbo um, on that on our on our left, and he got so much joy there. And you know, look, I'm not one. You know, I know it's not only the first game of the season. Of course, but I thought my tip was really poor I said, today, really <sighs> poor. And, I didn't look there. I know I, I don't want to be pointing the finger at one player, but because the, there were so many players today that we can we can easily point the yeah, finger. Look, at I it. thought I thought Trent was a kind of average. He was better in the second half when Elliot came on yeah. because he saw those triangles, and so which makes me come to my point is in the terms of the dynamic of the team, we have to understand. You know, look, I know and I love our team and I love our midfield, but there are too many question marks. Like I said last night, in terms of the fitness of our midfielders. Look, In terms of numbers, Thiago, we're fine. Look at Thiago. And now we're out of, without Thiago, Curtis, Ox. Canate uh, is obviously a defender, but it's barely August and we're already stretched in midfield. 
So look, I won't be surprised, and I know even Klopp said, look, you know, if we're going to dip into the market, it is dependent on injuries. So I won't be surprised if we go in and dip into the market now. And I want Liverpool to dip into the market because there's still time to bring someone in, and it doesn't need to be, you know, a Jude Bellingham. We need probably a couple of couple of bodies, and we can go and get him next year if he's not available. But I think this team needs a midfielder, and it's not just about a body. When Henderson, and look, I love our captain and the what he brings. He's a pure leader. He's a born leader on on and off the pitch. But it's unfair on him as well because he's expected to play that role in 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 a Harvey Elliott role where he's playing and making selfless runs so many times, where we're expecting him to do and drop a shoulder or play back to goal at times because he's so far up and wide out, out wide. He hasn't got the legs for that now. He hasn't got the creativity. He hasn't got the nous. Just like Harvey Elliott. And it's not a coincidence when Harvey Elliott comes on. He is absolutely brilliant. And that triangle that we see, we saw last year in the first four or five games, we saw in the last 30 minutes. And this is what, sorry, I said, this is what I mentioned, you know, in the, in, in the show yesterday. I really, really wanted Harvey to start. And I genuinely believe this was, was the game for him to actually start. For them away, yeah. you know, I know the, 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 the newly promoted side. So it was the perfect game. Yeah. You know, for us to create that triangle and look, Hendo, look, you know, you know how, how much I love Hendo. He's been a great servant of the club. He's a brilliant of footballer. Course. But I've always said, especially at the, 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 towards the end of last season, and I think a lot of Liverpool fans have, and have, have been saying this that look, I said, he's a six now. He's the, that's he where I want him to be. An eight. That's why I want him. And it's not surprising that his best patch, uh, part, uh, part of the game was his last 20, 30 minutes. There you go. It was it was weird because we 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 threw on um, who do we, we threw on Nunes and uh, Harvey Elliott where Henderson f found himself on the the left of uh, of midfield in, in 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 the midfield yeah but then obviously he was a lot better in the six with Harvey on the right and Milner on the left who I thought brought energy to the game as well so all our subs brought energy to the subs game were brilliant today they were brilliant all three of them you know uh, well I think it was only three of them yeah but Cavalli I thought Cavalli was slightly quiet when he came on. Um, but the rest of them, Harvey, uh, Nunes and uh, Milner, I thought all three of them were brilliant today when they came on. They did provide us that energy. And, and you know, Milner, uh, today, especially towards on that, on that left-hand side, he did really, really well. But I was just like, honestly, I'm more like baffled with the way we played. You know, when there's not many instances where we can say we were out four and out battled. Yeah. These guys, that read us in here, honestly, I, yeah, yeah. I was so impressed good, yeah. with him today. He had a good game, man. And look, they took me by surprise as well, as well as they took Liverpool by surprise. Let's not make no mistake about Did it. Did we underestimate him? I don't think we underestimated him. But we looked leggy and that was... That, that's that concerning. Was look, we I know we we sort of planned for the Community Shield and we put a lot uh, of, you know, sort of intensity and energy into that game. But it's a bit ironic that, you know, our... You know, brilliant manager, uh, assistant manager has bought a book out, released a book out called Intensity is Our yeah. Identity. But that for me, for the first 50 minutes, wasn't Liverpool. I think Clark mentioned, you know, we did everything that we weren't supposed to do in, in, whilst we were reading and whilst you were driving. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I read something where he said, you know, we did everything that we weren't supposed to do. So that just tells you, it was in, in regards to our game, game plan, we did the complete opposite. I, on, you know, honestly, like, I'm, I'm a bit peed off right now. Yeah. Look, um, going back to that point, of Henderson and our dynamic in midfield. Look, we know our midfield has evolved now, and that's why I was saying it's a bit unfair on him to expect so much in that role. We don't play with a flat three anymore. We play with, you know, an inverted right side in midfielder. Whether it's a Kaita who plays that slightly out wider compared to Harvey Elliott in the half space. So when Henderson and he's got the loyalty and the trust of, you know, Klopp, and no doubt, but today he wasn't helped. And let's make sure that it's clear. He wasn't helped with the likes of Trent in the first half. He wasn't held with the likes of, um, you know, Bobby. Because everything that was played into Bobby, either didn't stick, if it didn't stick, he wasn't playing it off and he wasn't connecting play. And that's what Bobby is there to do. And if it isn't, if he's not connecting play and he's bumping off him, you know, they're going to win all the second balls and we were swamped in the field. We were swamped. And how many times have Liverpool been pinned back in the first 30, 40, 50 minutes of a match? I can't remember it's unheard of. It's, it's, it's unheard of, especially from a promoted side. But look, we made those changes, and I thought we got momentum when we got the goal, to, you know, through the big man who I thought was absolutely was brilliant. Brilliant. Was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. And honestly, I know, I know, we've only seen a bit of him, but we have 
an absolute gem in David Nunez because he just just does it. He's just a brilliant player, but I think he just plays with his shirt. And the fans have connected to him. Yeah. Uh, the away fans, as soon as he came on, they saw him taking his shirt off just w before he was coming on. You know, it was the Nunes chant, and he got his goal. And straight away, you can see that connection between the fans uh, and our new signing. And I thought him and Salah, you know, they're, they're beginning to link up. You know, that's of course the, they, they've got some sort of understanding, and that will only improve, you know, as the season goes along. So, of look, course. I can look. I was really impressed with him. He sort of changed the game when he came on because he made them drop back for a further, further, further five to ten yards. Yeah, and you know. Harvey Elliott, I'm going to go back to Harvey, is you know, that triangle that these that Salah, uh, Trent and, and Harvey create on, on our right hand side, this, that is what we needed from the start of the game, I said, you know, we lacked that. And you know, with all due respect to Hendo, look, I know you say it's, it's not, or, or the onus isn't, you know, he, we are, we're, asking him to, we're asking him to do something that he's not capable, capable of doing, and that's the simple truth. Yeah. You know, in terms of technical ability, and he's, he, you know, I know he can whip a ball in, but technically when a game, when a game is going like that and the way it is, you need somebody who can put the foot on the ball, yeah. create some spotters, create some sort of sort of play and give us some sort of calmness. And you know, he, 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 he can't do that. So that's where we really, really struggled. And like you mentioned, nothing stuck to Bobby today. Yeah. And, and Fabinho and Thiago as well, let's be honest. They were, honestly, they were being pressed, they were, you know, harassed. And, you know, they were, they weren't, they couldn't get the space and couldn't, couldn't dictate the play. And I'm not surprised Thiago, went down because the game That's was intense and the speed story. of Fulham really really impressed me I was shocked really out, impressed honestly. me and I mentioned you know the way the way the um, Fulham swamped us you know from the minute go I genuinely believed that their intensity would drop yeah. you know I thought you know what genuinely when, when yeah. Liverpool play sides if you're, their intensity is at a very very high level especially in the first half it tends to drop because we'll just you know we'll keep passing the ball around and sooner or later it's gonna drop because you know, and I thought it's the first game of the season, but boy, did they surprise me! They did, they, they were did. unbelievable they did. today. I mean, and, and not just that, it was the way they actually played with the ball, yeah, the amount of times they created triangles, you know, and they, they were comfortable. Rounders. They played they were rounders. comfortable. The amount of times, you know, how many times did we get turned in the middle of the park today? And I got turned by Mitrovic, you know, I think he took two players completely out of the game. I think it was Reed is the other one who took two players completely out of the game with one separate turn. They played without no fear of us. And, you know, I, and I mentioned before, credit to credit to Marco Silverman, you know. Of he's course, got a decent yeah. side there that, you know, he's trying to he's, he's put together. And they've got a couple of players out. They play like that, I'd be surprised if they go down. Oh, they play like yeah, that. They, they play like that. And very organised as well. And every player plays for them. Well, look, let's add a bit of perspective to this. It's our first game. And even though it'll feel like, and it seems like we're overreacting, but it's our first game and it's not a sprint. And even though the, the bar is set so high these days, where after one game, fans feel so deflated, we must remember this is not... And not a sprint, it's a marathon. Look, I get that, and you know, there is going to be some sort of, you know, some sort of frustration uh, amongst the fans, especially, you know, we, we had expected to be full of, you know, yeah, we're supposed to come to and you know, take, the three, take the three points and move on. Um, and, you know, I think one of the lads were mentioning earlier, you know, they believe that it's not going to be a 95 plus season this year, so because of the changes happening to City and Liverpool and the other teams catching up, yeah. sort of thing. And it is you not know, putting some sort of perspective on the result. Yes, it's only one game. Yes, it's a draw. But I said it's these draws that ultimately yeah. cost us. Yeah. So you know the the, the bright the that from last season, the Brentham away, the Brightons, and um, you know, the Leicester away, and there's another one I'm sure. This is what costs at the end of the you know the, the margins for error, error sorry. Um, you know that's small. So. Yeah. I don't want, I know, you look, we'll move on and we'll, we'll keep going forward and we'll move on to the next game. Um, but, look, I'm just, you know, I'm really not yeah. happy to Look, it's a, long, it's a long season. It's a long season. There will be plenty of, you know, bumpy roads along the yeah. way. But as long as we get to the end goal and make sure we're picking up those big, big trophies at the end of the season, and that's what it matters. Look, it's one game. And I'm sure the, the positive is Cop will get those boys in. And make sure he, he he puts that right next week. And in terms of what do we do next week? I said before he's What do we do with Thiago? Thiago's look. Thiago, I think I'm not seeing how sort of uh, the severity of the injury, but at least two three weeks. I saw him hobbling. Like yeah, he looked like a hamstring to me when he was hobbling off. 
but I don't know. I'm sure they'll do a scan and uh, you know we'll see. But who finished the game in the six? It was uh, Henderson, Harvey Elliott, and James Milner. In our first day in the opening fixture, we finished with that midfield, which is slightly concerning if you really want to go for the, the big prizes. But look, you know we're gonna break down the game in a lot more detail when we get back, uh, and uh, we'll be releasing our deep analysis into the game. We'll be breaking down bit by bit where we went wrong and in terms of where we lost momentum. That penalty, by the way, was a big, big thing because I thought Liverpool will get the winner now and it just broke momentum. We came as well, we were creating chances at yeah. that point as well and I thought, you know what, you know, we'll go on and, and get the winner and then that flipping penalty came and then, you know, and then to be fair, look, we did the, but look, to be fair to Fulham, I thought, you know, the last 10, you know, even when we scored the, the second, we didn't really create anything. Yeah, look, no. to be fair, Fulham managed the game quite they did. well and I know a few players fell to the ground a bit, claiming injury, And but you can't blame them, you know, a newly promoted side is going to do that, it is going to do that, but yeah, that's, uh, I think that's our, we're wrapping up uh, the uh, post-match reaction, like I said, stay tuned for our sort of deeper analysis into the game on Sunday evening, where we'll be going live on YouTube, if you're watching this uh, video, please, on the way out, drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and it'll just give me another opportunity to sort of promote our uh, you know new shows as well. We had the front three last yesterday with the uh, the Blue Chip TV and Avi, of course, and uh, we'll make sure we'll be bringing plenty of content your way. Thank you very much, and we shall see you soon.